I don't usually like promoting specific products in an event like this, but um, this product has a very good scientific evidence, and I have had, I, I have had a very good results from it. So uh, here I am. So um, this morning, I've talked to you about the hydroquinone and the long-term side effects it can have, including exogenous or chronosis. Uh, or irritation from it. And this dyspara could be uh, uh, considered as a first-line non-hydroquinone topical treatment for hyperpigmentation, or, is, or even as a good maintenance treatment for hyperpigmentation. So I will talk about dyspara and the mechanism of action. And then I will also go through about some scientific evidence behind it, and indications and directions of use, and also some of my experiences, as well as from my colleagues. So Cispera is previously known as cysteamine cream, but they have relaunched, uh, relaunched with a better packaging, but the actual ingredient is the same, which is cysteamine. Uh, and it is developed by a company based in Switzerland called Scientis. Um, so you may hear me talking about cysteamine rather than Cispera, but I'm referring to the same treatment. So you have seen this slide earlier. So um, although cysteamine cream is fairly a new product, we have known the skin lightening effects since 60s when they found out that this goldfish turned white. And a few years later, they've done some further animal studies which have shown that cysteamine is actually uh, stronger than hydroquinone. But it was the strong smell which actually stopped us from using it on human skin. And as you can see on this diagram, it is made up uh, from cysteine. And cysteine is converted to cysteamine eventually, which works as a um, strong natural antioxidant. And it is present in uh, dairy products and human milk, and even present in uh, mammalian organs. And as you can see, uh, it is present in high concentration in human milk, which means that it is biological and safe to use. So you've seen this slide earlier again. So it has various mechanisms of action. So uh, it works by uh, inhibiting the first two steps of melanogenesis, so converting tyrosine to dopa followed by dopaquinone. And it also gets rid of dopaquinone from the pathway, so it blocks the conversion to eumelanin, which gives the black-brown color. And it also has the antioxidant effect um, as well. So uh, they've done a study on melanocytes in a test tube, and they have seen that there is 80% reduction in melanin synthesis uh, compared to uh, control, um, they, as you can see on the graph. Uh, between 2010 and 2012, scientists developed this new technology which allowed us to uh, use the um, cispera onto the human skin by getting rid of the strong odor. So this is the first study presented um, at the American Academy of Dermatology, which is one of the uh, top dermatology meeting. Uh, so they presented uh, 30 cases with epidermal melasma with successful uh, result. And since then, there were two randomized control study, which provides you the strongest evidence. And it is pub published at BJD, which is the British Journal of Dermatology, one of the top dermatologic journal in 2015, and also another study published at BJD, uh, BJT. So this first study published um, at BJD have uh, tested uh, cysteamine cream on 50 epidermal patients and compared with placebo. And as you can see, the red cone is the control group, whereas the green cone is the cysteamine cream. And you can see that there is 67% reduction in melanin index, which is measured using a device called Maxameter, which is a significant uh, finding at 16 weeks. And also the same study measured modified MASI, which is, the, uh, again, the melasma severity index. And you can see that uh, cysteamine is superior to control group. So a similar study carried out a few years later uh, reviewed 40 epidermal uh, melasma patients. And again, they've done the same, uh, they've used the same protocol uh, comparing placebo against um, cysteamine, which have shown that there is a significant reduction in melasma. And also you can see that there is a, um, all the, according to the investigators, global assessment, 
all of the investigators uh, felt that there has been improvement, and 90% of the patients were also uh, happy with the improvement. Um, and this study, again, shows that um, there is a, a significant reduction in um, MAZI when they actually compared with the triple combination cream called modified Clickman's formula. So this time, instead of comparing with placebo, they compared with triple combination cream, which is the current gold standard. And they have shown that there is a reduction in MAZI, and it is actually superior to triple combination cream, although the significance hasn't reached quite yet. And um, this has shown that there is a better IGA results, and also patients felt that there is a, a more significant um, improvement in cysteamine cream compared to triple combination treatment. Again, uh, the irritation is the main side effect with um, a triple combination cream, and you can see that 84% of the patients on triple combination uh, treatment group have developed irritation, whereas only 28% in cysteamine cream. And the irritation you get from cysteamine tends to be very short-lived, and it tends to resolve after 30 minutes. So it tends to be more effective in skin type 4 to 6, and uh, previous randomized control studies are mainly based on melasma patients with a good evidence behind it. It has been also tried on PIH, photo-damaged skin, dark circles, and semi-mucosal hyperpigmentation with some, uh, with some success. So how you use it is, um, it is a wash-off product. So you need to, a patient needs to uh, apply this on a greasy skin at night time. So if they are going to wash their face at night, they need to wait for an hour before applying cysteamine cream. Uh, so, and then they leave it on for 15 minutes, and then they wash it off, and then put their normal moisturizer. So um, in a more sensitive skin area, for example, around the eyes or a, a semi-mucosal area, you can reduce the contact, th that contact time to 10 minutes. And then if they are tolerating, then they can gradually build up to 15 minutes. So the, uh, it is recommended that it, um, the patients use it once every night for 16 weeks to see the maximum result. But you may start to see some improvement from week eight. Um, and then you can also use it as a maintenance treatment twice a week as long as they would like because it is biological and safe to use. So the good thing about uh, cysteine or cispera is that it can combine with lots of other treatments. So many patients may be already using topical retinoids, for example, for their anti-aging serum, or they might be using some glycolic acid face wash or pills. So if they were using these for the past six to eight weeks, then you can add in Cispera, and it rarely causes any problem. Also, you can combine with oral retinoid, uh, which is isotretinoin. So for example, in acne patients, they often present with uh, post-acne PIH as well. So you could combine uh, Rakutane with Cispera, but you just need to warn them that they might just need to increase the moisturization. And I have a patient uh, on both of them which, who is tolerating really well. And also, you can use it after any aesthetic procedures you do, which includes lasers, microneedling, or cryotherapy. So once the erythema settles, then you can add in uh, Cispera. So this table compares uh, Cispera um, to hydroquinone, which is the gold standard currently. So with Cispera, there are lots of advantages compared to hydroquinone. So with Cispera, it is biological, and it works on various pathways within melanogenesis. And it also has only very mild irritation compared to uh, hydroquinone, and it doesn't have any risk of uh, exogenous or chronosis. And um, in, in, a, any, in a mice study, uh, with oral hydroquinone, they have found that it can cause cancers and it can be mutagenic. But uh, although it hasn't been tried on, uh, with a topical hydroquinone, there is also worry, uh, always worries about carcinogenic side effects with topical hydroquinone. Which, uh, but with Cispera, you don't really have to worry about this side effect, which is another good thing. So to, uh, now I'm going to share with you about some of my patients. And I would be grateful if you could try not to take any photos uh, of my patients. 
So this first patient is a lady, uh, actually I've shown the photo earlier uh, in, in this morning's talk. So she's a 47-year-old lady uh, who has been suffering from melasma since 2016. So she has been um, trying various topical treatments, as you can see here. So hydroquinone cream for three weeks, which caused irritation. Then she went on to azelaic acid for six months, which wasn't effective. Then she went on to triple combination cream for three months, which was actually effective at the time. Then uh, it has recurred when she went on to the uh, azelaic acid maintenance treatment. So she was restarted back on triple combination cream for three months, but this time it wasn't effective. So she came to my clinic and I started her on oral transamic acid, which she was able to tolerate 10 days per month for three months. Uh, and I combined with the topical uh, triple combination cream tw uh, twice a week for three months. So um, as I mentioned earlier, the, her melasma has relapsed after about four to six weeks. So this time, uh, the photo on your left is when she finished the uh, course of oral transamic acid and triple combination cream. Uh, so I've restarted her back on oral transamic acid, but this time I've added in Cispera. And uh, at five weeks, you can see that there are some um, improvements. Certainly there are some reduction in uh, well-defined hyperpigmented macules on her mela area. She has a bit of general tan from her holiday, so you can just ignore about a bit of tan uh, around her eyes. And this is another review. You can see that there is a reduction in this uh, pigmented macules, which is less ill-defined at week five. Um, so the only comment she had from using Cispera was that uh, it had a bit of fishy smell, or um, she said it could smell a bit like hair dye. But if you warn them before you uh, suggest the treatment, they are able to tolerate it well. Okay, so, and I have actually tried on myself. It's not that strong smell. So you, your patient should be able to tolerate it. So the second patient is 47-year-old lady, uh, nine years history of melasma. She has been on oral contraceptive pill for the past 10 years. So she was happy to stop this after consultation with me. She has initially started triple combination cream for three months, followed by maintenance regime twice a week for four months which resulted in some partial improvement, but she still had a bit of my, uh, moderate melasma on the mela area. So I started her on Cispera and stopped her uh, triple combination cream. And you can see that there is a uh, lightening of a pigmentation at the, uh, at the inferior border of her um, hyperpigmented uh, patch on the mela area and also on the other side of the face. And uh, this was a result at eight weeks. And as I said, the maximum result is at 16 weeks. So I'm hoping that she will improve further when she comes back at 16 weeks. So uh, the next case is 20-year-old female uh, lady from Bangladesh. So she has long history of pigmentation, which started when she was seven months old. And only recently that uh, she has been diagnosed that it is PIH and probably from burnt out morphia, which is inflammation of the subcutaneous, subcutaneous fat. So she has tried three months course of adapalin, which wasn't effective, then went on to triple combination cream for three months with only partial improvement. But I have stopped triple combination cream as she already had areas of skin atrophy caused by previous morphia. So this is the result. So the photo on your left is after the course of triple combination cream. And eight, eight weeks of Cispera, you can see that there is some um, impressive improvement with her uh, hyperpigmentation. And she was actually using it around the eyes uh, with contact time 15 minutes. And she was able to tolerate it well and didn't have any irritation. Um, she also has some area of skin atrophy as you as you can see on um, the right side of the cheek. So um, with Cispera, because it is also has um, antioxidant effect, um, they have suggested that it could sometimes improve the skin atrophy as well. So I'm looking forward to see the results at 16 weeks. Um, next patient is 39-year-old gentleman. Um, he acquired a burn from Wu in Sudan 13 years ago, which resulted in severe PIH. 
so he has started triple combination cream for three months with partial improvement. Again, I stopped it as he already had areas of skin atrophy caused by previous burn. So uh, this is a result at eight weeks. So you can um, see that there is some general, general lightening of the um, pigmentation, although it's not as dramatic as the previous treatment. But again, he's tolerating it well, and um, I will be seeing him at 16 weeks. Uh, next patient is 22-year-old female. Um, she has many, many years history of acne on her face and back. Uh, but she hasn't really seeked any help until now. Um, so the, the photo on the left is before the treatment. So at this stage, I have started her limacycline to control her active acne on her back. And I also added in Cispera. So um, she, when she came back at three months, she told me that she only used Cispera three times a week for two months and then once, a day, uh, once at night for the last one month. And you can see that there are lightening of the pigmentation and she wasn't getting any new active acne. So I have stopped her limacycline and she will continue with Cispera uh, daily for another few months and then she will go down to maintenance regime which will be twice a week. And the last case of mine is 34-year-old gentleman, long-standing freckles on the, on the face. He has tried various over-the-counter skin brightening creams in the past with strict sun, uh, sun protection. And you can see that there are some lightening of his freckles um, and general improvement with the skin tone and texture at 12 weeks. Uh, this is another view. And I think this shows you more um, significant results. So all of my patients haven't really complained of any significant side effects, um, no irritation from them, although uh, one patient mentioned about the smell, which she was happy to continue with. So I will show you some photos uh, sent from some of my colleagues. So this lady, um, she had uh, been using triple combination cream for the past, uh, past three years, and you can see that there is some... Um, erythema on the male cheek with some pigmentation. So uh, when she was seen, uh, she was stopped, uh, triple combination cream, then this was switched to Cispera. And you can see that there is a significant reduction in pigmentation and erythema at 16 weeks. And then she went on to the maintenance regime twice a week. And after five years, you can see that she's maintained uh, really well without any recurrence of melasma. Uh, another case um, with Cispera uh, for eight weeks, and you can see that there is a reduction um, or even clearance of the melasma on the cheek above the, uh, above the lip and chin area. And another photo of melasma patients. So her melasma improved on the forehead at eight weeks uh, from using cysteamine. And then another photograph at eight weeks and 16 weeks, and you can see that there is um, significant improvement and reduction in pigmentation. So this lady had combination treatments. So um, she had in-house, uh, in-office procedures, including um, microdermabrasion, 5% hydroquinone peel-off mask, Cispera, and azelaic acid. And at, uh, uh, for four weeks, and then she went on to maintenance treatment with Cispera. And eight, eight weeks, although the lighting is different, you can uh, appreciate that there is uh, actually clearance of the pigmentation on her malar uh, area above the lip and chin. Um, so this could be used as a good combination treatment. Uh, this is the before and after photos of the fo uh, photo-damaged skin, and you can see that there is an improvement with the hyperpigmentation at eight weeks' use of Cispera. And this is a photo of PIH, and you can see that there is a significant reduction with PIH on the cheek with eight weeks' use of Cispera. And then another case with a uh, reduction in PIH. And it has been used on post-chemotherapy pigmentation. And you can see that there is a reduction in pigmentation at uh, 12 weeks use of Cispera. And it has also been tried on lip pigmentation, which is very difficult to treat. And even after 19 days, you can see that um, 
with the CISPERA, there is a reduction in lip pigmentation. So um, hopefully you learned about the scientific evidence behind it and also considering my experience uh, from my clinic and from my colleagues, I feel that it could be considered as a first line non-hydroquinone topical treatment and certainly as a maintenance treatment following any topical treatment containing hydroquinone or any aesthetic procedures. Thank you.